So I'm here with Adam White from the band. Uh, I'm from The Reason. You've just finished your sophomore album. What can we expect from it? Um, you can expect from it, it's a lot different. Um, it's still noticeably and recognizably The Reason, but it's, it's, more, um, it's more musical, I guess you could say. Uh, just, there's a lot of melody, a lot less, uh, less screaming. It's um, less aggressive, I guess, and more, more chilled out. I don't know. It's just I think it's better songs at the end of the day. Awesome. Better. Well, I saw on your MySpace and your website you have a song called "All I Ever Wanted," yeah. and one thing I noticed is there's a lot of keyboards and no screaming. Is yeah. that like going to be continuation onto the album? Yeah, ba basically, um, in the two years of touring that followed Ravenna, it was just. I just kind of got tired of screaming. I was just, it wasn't, it wasn't fun anymore. And it was just like, I can sing, why am I screaming? Oh, yeah? You know what I mean? It was almost like, I like singing way more. And I was taking vocal lessons. And it's just, anytime I would scream, I would hurt. And it was just kind of, it, it was just kind of a natural progression. Like, but uh, at the end of the day, I just wanted everybody to be able to understand what I was saying. Not like, fuck let's read the lyrics and try and figure it out it's like I just wanted to be clear with everything and if I'm gonna scream let's make uh, let's make it like listenable understandable you know what I mean so <laughs> The song that we're doing the video for is called This Is Just The Beginning, and it's track two off the record. Awesome. Because um, th your 150 video, you incorporated a bunch of bands that are also on Small Man Records. Yeah. That, that was just kind of like, we had to do a video, and uh, we had this bowling uh, place that we could rent for really cheap, awesome. and we had a video director that was going to do it for really cheap, and we were on the Small Man tour at the time, so all those bands were on tour with us. And they're all from out west, you know what I mean? Except Monine, and it was just like, do you guys want to come? You know what I mean? Blah blah. We'll we'll buy you guys lunch. We'll get everybody coffees. We'll have bowling, and we'll have fun. And it'll be funny. Awesome. And then everyone just was like, sure, because it was a day off on tour, right? So no one had anything to do. Speaking of Monine, what's the craziest thing that happened on your tour? The craziest thing that there's like a million things, man. Like Kenny's crazy. He jumped up. We played a show in Belleville, and he jumped up on top of the bass rig, like on top of like an 8x10 cabinet, and it was like, he's playing guitar up there, and then he just like leaps off and like rolls on the ground. It's like, how do you do that? And then there was another show where Cubby and Hippie got in a wrestling match on stage in like the middle of a song, and then I grabbed Hippie's guitar and started playing. It was just like, you didn't know what to expect every night. You had to watch it, because if you didn't watch Monine every night, you'll miss something. And then everybody on the tour the next day would talk about that thing, and you don't want to be the guy that missed it. So everyone had to watch Monine every night because they always just, they always got some, you know, that just happens out of nowhere. Oh yeah. Let's go back to when the reason was just starting out. What struggles did you have to overcome to start touring and get signed to a label? Basically, in the beginning, we just did everything ourselves. Like, I booked all our tours. 
our first record we put out ourselves. Um, we paid for the recording ourselves. And then we just made it look like we were a big band when we weren't. Like we, everything we did was professional and it was like there was a label doing it for us, but it was us. So then when it came time to like get a label, it was like, have you ever toured before? Well, yeah, I booked this to these last six tours, you know? And we already knew about the studio experience. So you just gotta like, don't wait for stuff to come to you. Like, get out there, you know, talk to bands, like meet people, figure out what you're, what to do and just do it. It shows some like professionality. Oh yeah, because it's like, you don't get everything handed to you. You do it yourself. And that's, you know what I mean? That's what, mu that's what music is. That's what, you know, punk rock is or whatever. You know, at the end of the day, and it's like, that's how we started. That's how any band, Aside from like a small percentage, all did did it themselves in the beginning. You know, booked their own shows. You want to play a show? You know, don't stand there and bug a guy for like a year to put you on a show. Book your own show. Meet some bands. You know, put the bands on the show. Put flyers up. You know, go around on the cold tape flyers to polls. Do it. Do it, and people will come. You know, and then you just got to build it from the ground up. It seems I'm having second on the Guys. Wow. Good deal. Uh, Otto likes the song 150. Yeah. I remember that. We said, we said, we said we meant business. And you, you saw it first.